Either you do it or you don't. There is no other options. You get the life that you want to, or you don't get the life that you want to. If you don't do anything and you're too lazy, your life is not going to be what you want it to be. You're tricking yourself into thinking that you're stuck in a rut. Choice number one, you create the life that you want to, the success that you want, the money that you want, the happiness that you want, the love that you want, the joy that you want, the peace that you want. That's one way that you could go. Or the other way is you don't get it. So you either are a success in life or you're a failure in life. There is no other option between the two. Now, when I say success, I don't just mean financial success. What I mean is you have this opportunity, this life that you're currently in, to create the life that you want to. You either do it or you don't. That's it. And if you do, that is a success. If you don't, that is a failure. So we're looking at it in the simplest form that we possibly can. There's two choices. You either get the life that you want to, or you don't get the life that you want to. Those are the only two ways that you could go. There's no in between. There's no like trial time. There's no second at bat that you get. People tend to act as if there is like, it's either black or white in life. People act like there's a gray area. Like, well, maybe, maybe if I wait about 15 years, then maybe somehow I'll, I will just get everything that I want by not changing my circumstances and I'll get everything that I want. I'll get the money I want, the happiness that I want, even though all I do is just sit on Instagram all day when I'm not at work or I'm on Netflix. Maybe my perfect partner will just come knocking at my door while I'm sitting there on Netflix, or maybe my perfect body will come in if I just keep eating the same food. Either you do it or you don't. There is no other options. You get the life that you want to, or you don't get the life that you want to. Ultimately, it comes down to, are you going to make excuses or are you going to get results? That's it. You can make excuses if you want to, or you can get results. Which one are you going to do? Which one have you been doing? If you look around you and you don't have the life that you want at this point, have you been getting the results that you want to? Because results come from action. Or have you been making excuses as to why you have not gotten the results that you want? Right? It's like growing up, you just, the, my dog ate my homework turns into just another excuse or blame for something else. And people are just, my dog ate my homework in everything in their life. Oh, I don't have the money that I want because my dog ate my homework, whatever that excuse means for them. I don't have the relationship I want because my dog ate my homework. I don't have the happiness that I want because my dog ate my homework. No, you either get what you want or you don't. You either make excuses or you get results. That's it. There's no other option. And if you've been listening to me long enough, you know that I like to say excuses are like buttholes. Everybody's got one and they all stink. So do you want to make excuses or do you want to get results? Because there's always, no matter what, no matter what you have in life, no matter how your life was, no matter how your parents were, no matter what your current life circumstances are, there is always an excuse that you could find as to why you don't have whatever it is that you want. Oh, I don't have enough time. How many people out there have said, I don't have enough time? As if the people who do have the lives that they want magically get more than 24 hours in the day. Oh, I don't have enough time. Change, I don't have enough time to I don't give a damn. And see if that starts to change the way that you perceive it. I don't have enough time or I don't give a damn. I don't have enough time to create the life that I want. Uh, I don't give a damn enough to, give, to create the life that I want. See if your perception starts to change. Don't use time as an excuse because everyone's got the exact same amount of time. Oh, it's not the right time though. Hear that one all the time. It's not the right time. Maybe in like, you know, maybe in three months, it will be the right time for me to create the business that I've always wanted. Maybe in three months, it will be the right time for me to create the body that I want. Maybe in three months, it'll be the right time for me to go out and find that perfect relationship because three months from now looks a lot less busy than right now. Do you know why three months from now looks less busy? Because it's three months from now. Very rarely do we plan three months out. And so it's always going to look less busy than it does right now. Because I guess, guess what? In three months, it's going to look pretty damn busy. You won't have enough time again in three months. You know what? I have kids. That's my excuse. Are you telling me that every person that's created the life that they want don't have kids? And you're just different? Oh, you just have kids? I always ask people, you know, when people blame their kids, which I think is the biggest cop out, is blaming their kids. Your kids should never be your excuse as to why you don't have the life that you want. Your kids should always be the reason why you create the life that you want for them. You can use them as an excuse or you can use them as your why. Which one do you want?
Because ultimately, that's what's going to change your life. I always say to people when they use their children as an excuse, oh, so you're telling me before you had your children, you were super successful and you had the life that you wanted and you had all the joy and the money and the peace and the happiness and the cars and the clothes and whatever it is that you wanted. Oh, you didn't? So what you're doing is you're just actually using your children as your scapegoat instead of actually looking internally and blaming yourself for your circumstances and knowing that you can change it, right? Don't use your children as an excuse. It's not their fault that they were born into this world. So you can't use them as an excuse. You have to use them as the reason why you will succeed. I coach business owners. I've consulted business owners for over a decade now. Some business owners come in and say, well, yeah, no, my business isn't succeeding because I've got children. I'm like, okay, cool. And then some people come in and they go, listen, I'm a single mother. I've got to make this shit work. And they work their ass off. And they've got two, three, or four kids and no one else supporting them. And they're more, they become more successful than the people who have everything that they need, but happen to have kids. Why? The person, who, the, the single mom decided not to make them an excuse. They, she decided to make them a reason why. Her back was against the wall and she's going to do it no matter what. That's the difference. Don't use your children as an excuse. Everybody loves to use their children as an excuse. Please don't do that. Oh yeah, I don't have enough knowledge to be able to do it. Or I don't have the right skill set to be able to do it. We live in the age where every piece of knowledge you could ever want across anything that's ever happened in the world is basically close to free. If you want to go start a business, if you want to go start an e-commerce business and start selling something on Etsy or selling something on Shopify or selling something on Amazon, you can get a lot of free knowledge on YouTube if you want to. Now, will you maybe have to buy a course to get really in-depth step-by-step-by-step knowledge? Sure. You might have to get, you know, let go of some of your money in order to get the knowledge that you need, but it will probably be, be a great investment as long as you take action. Because too many people buy a course and then they make excuses as to why the course didn't work, when in reality, it wasn't the course that didn't work, it was them that didn't work. You can either have excuse or you can have results. Which one is, the, the, which one is it that you want? Oh yeah, no. I don't know. There's just so much going on in the world right now. Maybe I'll wait till things change and things die down. I don't know about you, but it doesn't look like things are changing too much. It doesn't, I, it, the past few years, it just seems like things keep getting crazier. So if we're just looking at this as a, as a, uh, you know, a graph, it doesn't look like things are slowing down in any sort of way. So maybe I look at it instead of saying, okay, with all of the stuff that's happening in the world right now, instead of me saying right now isn't the right time, or maybe there's too much going on in the world right now, maybe I look at it and say, hey, if I go back and I look what Warren Buffett's, one of his most famous quotes, Warren Buffett, billionaire investor says, when everyone is greedy, be fearful. When everyone is fearful, be greedy. And I remember last year thinking of that quote when COVID hit really hard in lockdown. And I thought to myself, I started seeing people losing their jobs. I started companies firing people. And I thought to myself, this is not the time to pull back because everyone's being fearful right now. This is a time to go double down on everything that I'm doing to, to hire the right people and put the right things in place. Cause I'm going to do the exact opposite of everybody else in the world. Because if people are going left, I'm going to go right. If people are going right, I'm going to go left. So maybe you should look at it and say, well, instead of me looking at what's going on in the world right now and being fearful, maybe I should look at it and say, you know what? Maybe with all of this pullback that people are doing, it leaves me so much more opportunity. If you look at how many businesses that are massive businesses, like I'm talking like marquee businesses that have been around for 50 to 100 years, how many of them were started in a great, like a, a massive recession? It's like more than 50% of them. So when things are changing and things are shifting, it's not a time to be afraid it's a time to double down and to go for it. So maybe you should use that as your reason why you're doubling down and taking action versus not going, oh yeah, this isn't, this isn't the right time. Maybe I should just wait and see if things pan out positively. There is never going to be a perfect moment to do whatever it is that you want. The perfect moment is always the moment that you are in. That's it. There will never be a moment in your entire life where you will not be here and it will not be now. Right? So if I, if I ask you, where are you right now? You would say, I'm here. Wh what time is it? It's now. If I'm thinking about the future, it seems like it's a different moment. But when I get to that future, I will be here in this moment and the time will be now. It is here and now, always. Your life is always a here and now moment. So if you think that the future is going to be different than right now, and then is going to be a better time for you to create the life that you want, it won't. Now is the time. You can find all of the excuses as to why you're not creating the life that you want. But ultimately, 
that's a trick that your brain is playing on you. So let me explain to you how your brain is actually screwing you over. Our brain is designed to do one thing and one thing only. It's to keep us safe, to keep us alive. And your brain knows that in this current moment, with everything that you've done, you are not dead which means that everything that you've done to get you here is safe enough because it didn't kill you. It doesn't know that if you don't, you know, if you go out and want to create a million dollar business, the amygdala, the oldest part of your brain, the fear mechanism inside of your brain is going to go, mm, we've never created a million dollar business before. We should be afraid of that because anything that is something that we've never done or uh, actually had happened before, we should be afraid of because it's potential death that's there. You know that if you build a million dollar business, you're not going to die. But your amygdala doesn't know that. So what your amygdala does is it creates fears and excuses and self-sabotaging mechanisms to keep you in your comfort zone. Like for instance, here's an example. I want to build a million dollar business and I've got a couple kids and I'm sitting there and I'm going, I've got the plan. I've got everything that I need because ultimately we all know Here's the secret to life. You know what you need to do to be successful, whatever success means to you. You know what you need to do. You're just not doing it. It's that simple. You just got to take action. So the plan to get there is not the most important part. The action taking is the most important part. So people will come up with this plan to create this business and their market strategy and their niche and their perfect clients, but then they won't take any action simply because they're afraid to take action because their brain has designed itself to do that to keep you in your comfort zone. So then you've got to go, okay, so I've developed this perfect, perfect action plan and everything that I need to do to create this life. And you sit there and you go, oh, but yeah, but what if? Oh yeah, but what if this happens? What if, you know, I, I want to create this, but what if, what if my mom says something about this? What if, you know, there's a catastrophe? What if I stop, I can't pay the bills and I have children I've got to feed? What if something happens with one of the kids and I don't have insurance? Whatever it is, your brain will start creating all of these fear-based beliefs and thoughts to keep you in your comfort zone. You've got to become aware that your brain is designed to self-sabotage you. Because of that, I'm going to tell you something that's a beautiful thing. You don't have to believe in yourself to take action and you don't have to wait until fear is gone in order to take action. In fact, you're probably not going to fully believe in yourself majority of the time and you're not going to get rid of all of your fears. So knowing that your fears are not going to go away and that you're also at the same time going to find mechanisms of self-sabotage and you're going to be afraid and you're not going to want to do it. You're not going to believe in yourself. You can feel all of those feelings and take action anyway. That's the beautiful thing about it. You don't have to believe in yourself to take action and you don't have to get rid of fear to take action. Your brain is designed to keep you inside of your comfort zone. That's what it is designed to do because in your comfort zone, you stay alive. So when you feel the feelings of fear, when you feel the, the self-sabotage coming up and the excuses coming up, that is actually what you should be paying attention to going, ah, I've met the edge of my comfort zone. So anything inside of this, if I take a step back, is going to be in my comfort zone. But if I lean into this, it's going to be pushing me outside of my comfort zone. Just because I don't feel safe going and creating a million dollar business or because I have excuses of having a family or because I have excuses as to now is not, right, not the right time, doesn't mean that I don't take action anyways. Your life is changed only, 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 only when you take action. If you're not taking action, you're making excuses as to why you're not taking action and you're believing those excuses and all of those excuses, they're BS and they're holding you back from what you want in life. So you have to realize either you sit back and you continue to listen to that little voice inside of your head that's keeping you in your comfort zone. You continue to make excuses and to self-sabotage and you'll wake up 10 years from today and it'll be like, why didn't I take the action when I should have? Or you feel the feelings, you feel the lack of belief, you feel the excuses and you say, I don't care, I'm going to do it anyways. No care. I don't care what my thoughts are. I don't care what my feelings are. I don't care what my excuses are. I don't care what my beliefs are. I'm going to do it anyways, simply because I deserve this life. I want to create this life. And the people that I love that are around me deserve this life as well. Screw my excuses. You can either have the excuses or you can have results, but you can't have both. Which one are you going to choose? So if you're someone that's out there and you tend to be a little bit lazy if you're not getting things done that you need to, or if you tend to procrastinate too much, I'm going to give you my strategies on how to make sure that you stop being lazy. So the first tip that I'm going to give you before we dive into like the actual meat and potatoes of exactly how to do it is to stop lying to yourself. You need to first admit 
that you are a lazy person because all too often I see people that are lazy. They're not getting the stuff done that they need to. And then ultimately what they do, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm just, I've got stuff going on and they make excuses for everything of, to the reason why they're not achieving the goals they want, why they don't have the life that they want. When in reality, the thing they need to do is just admit that what the real issue is, is that they're lazy and they're a procrastinator and they don't have plans put in place. So the first thing you need to do is to admit to yourself to fully be transparent and say, you know what? I do have a problem with laziness. It's the same way that if somebody is an alcoholic and they go through a 12 step program, the very first thing to do is to admit that so that they can overcome it. Because once you admit it, then you can start to work through it. And that's the important thing is to realize that, that humans are inherently lazy more than anything else. If you were to just go back in, in 100,000 years ago, 200,000 years ago and see our ancestors, I don't think that they were just working all day long. If I were to make a guess, if they're in the middle of the desert and it's really hot outside and it's 101 degrees, they're probably under a tree in the shade hanging out because they hunt in the morning and then they hunt in the evening. And then during the day, they're just sitting around and sitting in the shade most likely. So I think being lazy is inherently inside of humans. So for you to not be lazy is kind of going against what you actually would be doing as a typical human if you weren't born in a Western world like we are now with, you know, Instagram and Facebook and all of these things. So uh, when you realize that we are inherently lazy and you admit, okay, I am a lazy person. I have been lazy. It is my fault. It's no one else's fault. It's no one, no one outside of me's fault. It's nothing externally. It's 100% me and you stop blaming anybody else or anything else and you take full 100% responsibility, then you can start actually taking steps to overcome that laziness that you have. So that's the first tip. Make sure that you admit it to yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Be 100% transparent. The second tip that I'm going to give you is to take your goals and make sure that all of your goals are bite-sized. And I don't mean take your goals and make them smaller. What I mean is take your goals and take the time frame. So if you have, for instance, let's say you want to make $100,000 this year, and that's the goal for the year. If you look at that and you've never made $100,000, there's a part of you that that scares. There's a part of you that that's outside of your comfort zone, and you're not really sure how you feel about it. Like you want to make the $100,000, but there's a party that's kind of, if we're being honest, you're kind of scared shitless of making that 100000 because what do you have to do? How hard do you have to work? How much more time do you have to put into it? So if you're looking at the number and you're saying, okay, this is a long-term goal over the next year, that's 365 days, right? That's a decent amount of time from right now. So when you look at it that way and you say, okay, I need to take these and make these more bite size. What does that mean? I need to take that $100,000 goal and I need to figure out how to take that $100,000 goal and make it smaller, make it so it's more bite-sized. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you're a sales rep and your goal is to make $100,000 this year. Okay. Well, now that we have the goal of $100,000, we've got that figured out. If you break down your numbers, which every sales rep should know their numbers, how many you know sales they get, depending on how many appointments that they have, how many phone calls they need to make in order to get an amount of a certain amount of appointments, and you look through and you say, okay, if I'm looking at my long-term goal of how much money I want to make this year, a hundred thousand dollars, and I say, okay, over the next year, that means weekly I need to make sure that I'm doing a hundred calls per week. If I just do a hundred calls per week. Statistically, I should make $100,000 this year. Automatically, doesn't that already feel better? Because I'm not focusing on the entire year. All I'm doing is I'm focusing on this week. So I know what needs to be done. Okay, let's take it another step further. If I look at that and I say, okay, if I work for five days and it's 100 calls a day, 100 calls a week, that's 20 calls a day. I mean, I can focus on 100, 100, 100 calls a week, 20 calls a day. And if I just do my 20 calls a day and I only focus on just that one goal, statistically, I'll make $100,000. Isn't that a lot easier? Because then you're taking something that's really far away and really big and making it really close and really small. 20 calls a day. I can do that. If I'm working for the next eight hours, what is that? Like two and a half calls an hour? I could do two and a half calls in an hour. That's super easy. So take whatever goals that you're going for and make them more bite size. And the thing about it is because of the fact that they're bite size, you're more likely to hit little tiny goals throughout the day, which motivates you to then work harder, right? So if you're lazy, the reason why this is important is because if I go, oh, I'm gonna make $100,000 this year, that's really far away. But if I go, I only need to make two and a half calls this hour, then what happens? 
I make two and a half calls this hour, you know, three calls this hour, and I go, holy crap, I'm ahead. And it actually makes me feel better because I have little teeny tiny checkpoints that I'm hitting. And each time I hit a checkpoint, what happens? I gain confidence. And when I gain confidence and I feel like I'm moving and progressing towards the goal that I want to go for and the life that I want to create, it actually gives me more drive and more motivation towards that goal, which is more, more than likely going to make me less lazy. So take all of your goals, all of your big goals, and just make them smaller. Figure out a way to chunk them down a little bit. It's the easiest way to do it. If you sit down to eat a meal, you don't eat the entire meal. You eat the meal one bite at a time. So stop worrying about the entire meal and just worry about each and every bite, each and every day that you have. So that's number two, is to take your goals and make them smaller because then you're gonna hit more checkpoints, which is going to then make you excited to keep working harder towards your goal. Step number three is to figure out what your why is. If you don't, if you're, if you're too lazy, the reason why is because you just really don't care enough about your goals. But if you can figure out exactly what you want and why you want it, it makes it much easier to go for it. So let me give you a very drastic example, but it's my favorite example because it shows everybody they can do whatever they want. So one of my favorite things to do when I'm giving a speech and, and I start to talk about this is I'll go into a group of people and I say, hey, everybody here, what is the actual percentage chance that you're going to make a million dollars in the next 12 months legally? What's the chance that you make a million dollars in the next 12 months legally? Who's gonna, who has over a 5% chance? And I raise my hand and nobody ever raises their hand. Who has a 1% chance of making a million dollars legally in the next 12 months? And like a couple people raise their hand. And then I say, who thinks that there's a 0% chance of you making a million dollars over the next 12 months legally? and everybody raises their hand. They think there's a, almost everybody thinks there's a 0% chance. And I go, okay, I'm gonna take that exact same goal and I'm gonna shift it around a little bit and see if we can shift the way that you believe in yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna say, what's the percentage chance of you making a million dollars this year legally? And if you don't, everybody that you love is killed. And I raise my hand and say, who's, who think, what's the percentage chance? 100%, 100%, 100%, 1,000%, 10,000%. 10, Everybody goes from 0% chance to 100% chance. Now, why is that? The goal didn't change. The time frame didn't change. What changed is they actually give a damn about the goal. That's what changed, right? There's a why behind the goal. If everybody that you love gets killed, there's no such thing as laziness right? You'll wake up early. You won't make excuses. You'll get everything that you need to get done. And you won't, you probably wouldn't even look at Instagram or Facebook throughout the entire year. There would be no way that you're lazy over the next year. If everyone that you love's life depends on it for you to make a million dollars legally, you would figure out a way. So what does that show you? You're not just lazy. You're lazy because you don't love what you're doing. You're lazy because you're not fully tied into exactly what it is that you're trying to create. It's not that it's not possible. It's 100% possible. It's 100% possible for everybody listening to me right now, somehow to figure out a way to make a million dollars in the next year. But the problem is, it's not that you don't have enough time, it's that you just don't care enough. And that's the main issue. So how do you make yourself care more? You've got to have a really, really, really strong why. So if you figure out what your goals are and you figure out what your why is, laziness doesn't exist anymore. You'll get up and work when your why is strong enough to figure out why it is that you're working towards what you're working. So that's the third thing is to find your why behind all of your goals. That'll get you past your laziness. Number four is to remove the distractions. Here's the thing that I know. When you're being lazy, I guarantee you're not just sitting on your couch and just staring up at your ceiling the entire time, right? What are you doing? You're keeping yourself busy in some sort of way. If I were to guess 99% of the people listen to this, when you're being lazy, you're probably either watching something on TV or you're on your phone. I don't think there's anything else that people are really doing besides that. You're not just staring up at the clouds and watching the clouds pass by and that's your quote unquote laziness. What's happening is you're figuring out another way to distract yourself so that you don't do the thing that actually needs to be done. So if you can remove that distraction, then you're more likely to just go ahead and go, all right, well, shit, I got nothing else to do. I might as well go ahead and do it. So what's a big way to do this? Take your phone and put it in the other room. If you got something important to do, if you have something that needs to get done, take your phone and put it in the other room. Turn off all of your notifications on your phone. For some of you guys, that scares you. 
Turn off all of your notifications. Take your freaking Apple Watch off. That's the biggest. I have an Apple Watch, and the only time I ever wear it is, I work, is when I work out because I just don't even want to have all of those distractions. So turn your Apple Watch distractions off. Turn your phone distractions off. The only way, like for me, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you, the only way that you can get a hold of me on my phone is if you call me. If you send me a text message, my phone doesn't light up. Nothing lights up. The only time it lights up is when I get a phone call, not when I get an email. Not when I get a Facebook message, not when I get an Instagram message, not when I get somebody that likes one of my photos, nothing. No, no way would I ever have notifications get in the way of what I'm truly trying to do. So turn off all of your notifications on your phone. Next, turn off all of your notifications on your computer. Your computer should have all of your notifications off as well. I don't want to know every time someone sends me an email. I check my email once every two to three days. I don't want to know. There's no way because that's going to pull me from everything that I'm trying to do. You know what I mean? So I don't want to focus on that. There's no way that I want to focus on those things. So I'm going to remove as many distractions as I possibly can. How do I remove as many distractions as I possibly can? Turn off my freaking notifications. Put my phone in the other room. Let everyone know that you're about to go do something. So like, for instance, when I'm planning my episodes, I planned this episode earlier today. I tell my girlfriend, hey, I'm gonna go plan some episodes. I plan three episodes in a row. What do I do? I take my phone, I put it in the other room. I get onto my computer that has no distractions on it. I put my headphones in. I tell my girlfriend, hey, I'm going to go and start, uh, start planning some episodes. She knows to leave me alone for the next two hours because that's what's going to get me focused. Because if I break my focus, it makes it easier for me to go back to doing nothing. So I'm trying to get myself into the zone so I can literally go, okay, I'm in the zone. Now I'm going to stop being lazy. Now I'm going to do exactly what needs to be done. So just stop freaking, turn, turn your Netflix off. D delete your Netflix account. Delete your Facebook account. Delete your Instagram. Delete all of those things and see if you're still lazy because you're not going to have shit to do. It's the truth, right? Like if you get rid of Instagram, Facebook, whatever else there is, Twitter and, you know, Snapchat. Some people I think still use Snapchat and, you know, TikTok. And now there's this new thing called Clubhouse. You delete all of those and you delete your Netflix and your Hulu and all of those things. If you're being lazy, the only thing you're doing is you're sitting outside watching the grass grow. So if you're being lazy, you're probably distracting yourself in another way. So what are those distractions? Write them down with a pen and paper and get rid of those freaking distractions. So that's number five or number four. And then number five, the last one is my favorite thing is just the Pomodoro technique. The Pomodoro technique says, I'm going to work for 25 minutes and then I'm going to take five minutes off. You can do anything for 25 minutes, right? Anything. You can figure out a way to just work for 25 minutes. So you say, all right, screw it. I'm being lazy. I can notice that I'm being lazy. I'm admitting to myself that I'm being lazy. I need to get this thing done. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to get my computer. And what am I going to do? Uh, next to my computer, I'm going to have a pen and paper. And I'm going to write down whatever it is that pops up into my head. Because I've got one task, only one task that I can do for the next 25 minutes. I'm going to put my headphones in. I'm going to listen to, you know, I always listen to music on YouTube. I look up a focus binarial beat song. It's like three hours long and I just put it on. So therefore there's no music, there, there's music. There's no sounds that could come into my ears except for just this music. I'm in control of the sounds that are coming in. And then there's no words inside of the song as well. If there's no words inside the song, there's nothing to distract me. And I can start thinking about the lyrics like I do. So I don't have that to distract me. And I go, okay, the only thing that I can do for the next 25 minutes is this one task. And if you give your brain no other options, you'll realize that your brain can get hyper-focused. And if you are sitting there and a great idea comes into your head, instead of going and putting that somewhere, all you have to do is take your pen and paper and write that on the journal that's next to you. And you focus on just one thing for 25 minutes. You'll be surprised how much you can get done being hyper-focused with no distractions, with no notifications coming in, with no external sounds, how much you can get done in literally just 25 minutes. It's kind of crazy. You're way more efficient than you actually realize. When those 25 minutes is, you're done with those 25 minutes, you take a five minute break. That's it, super simple. Take a five minute break and you could go on Instagram, you can go to the bathroom, you can go stare at clouds passing in the sky, do whatever you want for those five minutes. You're completely done working for those five minutes. And then what do you do? You go back in and you do another 25 minutes and you only have one task to work for. It's really not that hard. Being lazy, is a really easy thing to pull yourself out of. You just have to be aware, you have to admit it, and you have to make a plan and you have to have a really strong why. And if you do that, 
it will pull you out of your laziness so that you can start to get shit done. Because I'm telling you this, if you don't do anything and you're too lazy, your life is not going to be what you want it to be. So in order to build the life that you want, follow these steps, pull your ass out of laziness and get to work. I'm gonna give you seven ways, seven action steps that you can use to get out of a rut. And to start off today, I wanna to give you a phrase that I say all of the time to kind of help you understand what a rut is and how to get out of it. And that phrase is this, inaction causes more inaction. Action causes more action. What do I mean by that? If you're in a rut, you're never in a rut when you're moving. Like if you ever feel like you're stuck in a rut, it's never when you're moving. It's always when you're stagnant. And I always use the phrase stagnant on purpose because I think very visually, and I, when I think the word stagnant, I think of like a pond that's been stagnant for a long time. It's got like a gross film over top of it. There's flies and it's just becoming disgusting because I never want to think of my life as stagnant as that pond is. And I get it. If I'm saying you have to take action in order to get out of a rut, you're like, well, what the hell? Like I, I, I'm trying to learn how to take action, right? That's the, the reason why I'm in the rut is because I can't force myself to take action. I get it. So I'm going to give you my seven tips to actually get out of a rut. And I get it. Like you take action all day long though. So you might be sitting there and you're like, yeah, but Rob, like I, I, I'm not, I want to take action, but I'm not taking action that I want to, right? So I'm just, I'm not taking action. So how am I supposed to take action when I'm not taking action? You have to realize you're taking action all day long, right? If you're in a rut, you're not just sitting on the couch and then peeing on yourself, right? Getting up off of the couch, walking to the bathroom and peeing is action. When you're hungry, you get up off of the couch and you go and get some food. Both of those things are taking action. The only difference is it's not the action that you want to take for the life that you want, right? You don't need to be inspired or motivated to go take a sh You're going to do it if you have to, right? You don't have to do it to go pee. You don't have to do it to, if you're hungry. And I'm telling you this because I want you to actually really see this and feel this in your mind. You're tricking yourself into thinking that you're stuck in a rut, right? If a lion walked into your house right now, you wouldn't have to search for motivation to run from it. You wouldn't, right? You would just get moving. You'd run, you'd take off, right? And so you have to realize you're tricking yourself into thinking that you're in a rut in the first place. And I'm gonna give you obviously steps to get out of it. But what it's really about more than anything else is, is starting small, more than anything else. A lot of times, you're not taking action because you're thinking about all of the things that need to be done versus what's the next thing that needs to be done. You're thinking about all of the things, right? If you, if you want to go to the gym and you're not motivated, you're stuck in a rut physically and your body's not where you want it to be and you know you need to go to the gym, it's not because of the fact that you have to go to the gym and do a curl. It's because of the fact that you have to, you're thinking not of that one curl, you're thinking of every single exercise, every single thing that you need to do. Getting into the car, well, first off, getting dressed, getting yourself ready, making sure that you have water, putting on your shoes, getting into the car, going to the gym, lifting the weights, doing every single set that you, and you start thinking about all of them versus what's the next thing they need to do, right? You're not thinking about one curl, you're thinking about all of the curls, all of the sets that you need to do, all of the reps that you need to do. And sometimes you have to take it back to just the simplest form, right? There's two things you need to focus on. Number one is your mind. And number two is your body, right? In order to get out of a rut, you need to trick or get two things moving. You need to get your mind moving and you need to get your body moving, right? So when I say get your mind moving, find something, put on something that makes you feel better whether it's a certain song that you love that you want to dance to, whether it's this podcast, whether it's someone else's podcast, maybe it's another motivational speaker, somebody that makes you feel like, you know what, I can do this. Maybe it's David Goggins. You need someone to yell at you and scream at you and cuss at you. Or maybe you need someone inspirational or motivational or someone spiritual. I don't know what it is, but you need to trick your mind in a way to get your mind actually moving. So that's the first thing you got to think about. What can you do to get your mind moving? Second thing you gotta think about is your body. You just have to physically move your body. Once again, I said, if you have to go to the bathroom, you're gonna get up and go to the bathroom stuck in a rut. You're not gonna pee on yourself, right? If you're hungry, you're not going to starve yourself. You're gonna get up and you're going to take small action. Now, I realize that going to the bathroom and getting food 
are not going to create this incredible life that you want to create. But sometimes you just got to take the action that you need to, even when you feel like shit, and your body will catch up to you, right? So motivation can come from the mind. Motivation can come from the body. So that comes to the very first thing. So out of the seven tips I'm going to give you, number one is to move your body. Whatever it is you need to do. Do not negotiate with your mind. If you feel like you're stuck in a rut, nobody's stuck in a rut moving. Like I said, you're always stuck in a rut and you don't feel right and you don't feel motivated when you're sitting on the couch and you're looking at Instagram. Hey, delete Instagram already. Get rid of it if you have to. If it's getting in the way of holding you and holding you back from the dreams that you want, get rid of it, right? Move your body. If you're not moving your body, you find it hard to move your body, I need you to get enough motivation to get up and get some form of caffeine in you if you need to. Something that's going to get you moving. If you want something that's that's not caffeine, you can do B12, right? Take vitamins, whatever it is that you have to do to get your body moving. What happens is, once again, inaction creates more inaction. Action creates more action. So if you go, you know what? I don't feel 100%. I don't feel ready to do this. All you have to do, force your body to move. Get up, do some jumping jacks, put on some music, whatever it is that you have to do, right? Take small steps, which is number two. So number one is get your body moving. Number two is to take small steps. Once again, as I said earlier, if you're not taking action towards the life that you want, towards the things that you need to do, it's because you're thinking about doing all of the things that you need to do, even though there's no possible way that you can do all of them at one time, right? Just think about, okay, I need to get in shape. All I need to do is go to the gym and just do one curl. That's it. I don't need to do anything else. I just need to do one curl. And when you get to the gym and you do one curl and just make that the only thing you need to do, don't even, you don't have to do anything else. If you go into the gym and you do one curl and walk out, that's a win because you've at least gone in the right direction of what it is that you want. But I guarantee you when you get to the gym and you do one curl, you have a weight in your hand. You're like, you know what? I might as well just do a couple more and you do a couple more. And then what happens is your body starts to create endorphins. Your body starts to create all of the feel-good chemicals that I'll talk about, right? What you do is your body will trick itself into going, you know what? This actually feels good. Maybe I should keep doing this. And then you do it again and you do it again. And then you realize 45 minutes later, you're not focusing on the whole 45 minutes. Realize that you're focusing on just the next curl, just the next squat, just the next foot in front of the other in your walk on the treadmill, whatever it is you need to do take the small steps. Don't worry about everything. Just worry about what the next thing is in front of you. So that's number two to get out of a rut is to take the small steps. Number three, this is something that not enough people talk about. Celebrate your small wins. If you got up, you put on some clothes and you got in the car and you got to the gym and you walked inside of the gym, that's a win, right? You've got to give yourself celebrations for all of these little teeny tiny micro wins, right? Dance after you get that first set done. You know, if you're, I have a gym in my garage, right? If, if I don't feel like it, I'm gonna put on the music, I'm gonna drink some caffeine, and I'm gonna make myself feel really good. I'm gonna dance around in my garage and get my body moving, and I'm going to celebrate the small wins. This is the reason why this is important. Number one, it gets the body moving. You get on the good music, and the good music always makes you feel better. But your brain will release serotonin and dopamine, and serotonin and dopamine make you feel good. And when you feel good, your body and brain want more of those feel-good chemicals. How do you get the feel-good chemicals? By celebration. That's when they're released. So if you, if, you know, if, if I'm like, I don't feel like I want to work out, I'm like, oh God, I gotta, I'm sitting on the couch. I'm like, I just gotta force myself to get up and do it. I force myself, I get my clothes on, I walk into my garage and I'm like, I'm just gonna lift one thing, right? I lift one thing, that's all that it is. I'm like, all right. I did what I needed to do. Let me put on some music. Let me celebrate this success. And when I celebrate and I move around and I dance and I start to force myself to feel good, which is something that is 100% possible for every single person right now is to force yourself to feel good by having little celebrations. I go, whew, I actually feel really good. You know what? I actually could do another set. And I do another set and I move around and make myself feel good. I put on some of my favorite songs. I put on my feel good music. I've put on my, my happy playlist. And I do the next set and I do the next set. I celebrate every single one of them. And what happens is it start, I start to get momentum on my side, right? Which is, I know I think I'm gonna talk about it in just a minute, but I'm not there yet. Number four is to turn off your phone. Yes, turn off your damn phone. Your phone 
is killing you from the dreams that you like killing all of the dreams that you want in your life because it's taking you away getting on Facebook, getting on Instagram, like all of those things are great. I think that they're great if they're used correctly, but I think they're misused by most people. So turn off your phone. Then what do you need to do? Turn off all of your electronics, right? If you just turn off your phone and you turn off your electronics and you go, you know what? I'm just going to sit here. You're going to get bored and you're going to go, I have to have something to do. Why? Because humans at this point in time, we're so addicted to doing things. It's really hard to just sit on your couch and stare at the ceiling. Trust me, I've tried it, right? I do it sometimes. I force myself to literally stare at the, at the ceiling. And I'm like, I'm not gonna look at my phone. I'm not gonna look at electronics. I'm not gonna do something right now. I'm gonna literally just sit and be. But for most people, you get to that point, you're like, I gotta find something to do. I've gotta do something. And you get bored because your phone is off, your TV is off, none of those, you can't turn your computer on, you can't go onto YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, none of those things. You'll get bored and you'll go, I gotta do something. Guess what? that's what you want. You want to be able to do something. So literally you force yourself into a mini boredom, which is then going to make you then take action the way that you want to. So then what do you do? Okay. I'm in this mini boredom. I feel like I want to do something. Number five is focus on just the next 60 seconds. I don't care about the next five minutes. I don't care about tomorrow. I don't care about the next hour. I don't care about later on today. I don't care this, about this afternoon, this evening, any of those things, the next 60 seconds. If I'm on the couch and I'm bored because my, my, I have, I got no Instagram. I got no Facebook. I got no TikTok. I got none of those things that come and save me. I can't turn on Netflix because my TV's off. I can't go onto YouTube because my computer's off. I take all of those things away. I go, okay, I want to do something. Like I feel like I should do something. What do you do? Okay. In the next 60 seconds, what can I do to get me closer to this goal that I want? That's going to get me out of a rut of you know, the body that I want, for instance, if we keep going down that route, what can I do in the next 60 seconds? I can do 20 pushups. All right, let's just do 20 pushups. And that alone, the next 60 seconds, that's going to take me into the direction that I want to move with my life. That's the key. What can I do in the next 60 seconds? That's going to move me into the direction of where I want to go with my life. And you can ask yourself this question is what I'm doing right now, getting me closer to or further from my goals. Is what I'm doing right now, getting me closer to it further from my goals. Okay. So then over those next 60 seconds, boom, 20 push-ups. Maybe I put on some feel good music. Maybe I'd celebrate a little bit. Maybe I get all excited. I get that happy feeling. I get those dopamine, the serotonin, all of those things. I start to feel a little bit better. All right, cool. I'm starting. I don't feel like amazing, but I'm starting to feel a little bit better. You know what I'm talking about? You've done this before, right? You start to feel, all right, maybe I could do another set of 20 push-ups, whatever it is. All right, that brings us to number six, which is ride the momentum. Now I'm starting to feel just a little bit, maybe not a whole lot better, but just a little bit better. I'm gonna celebrate. I'm gonna get that serotonin. I'm gonna get that dopamine. I'm gonna get the music playing. I'm gonna get the dancing going. I'm gonna get the celebrating going. Now that it's rolling, I wanna keep it rolling. And this is the important part, is to make sure that when you start to feel the momentum, you don't let the momentum stop. And you ride the momentum until you're done. Right? I always say that if you're at the very top of a really big hill and you take a 15 pound bowling ball and I decide that I'm going to let the bowling ball go and I let it go and then I immediately stop it, it's very easy to stop if I immediately stop it or a half a second later I stop it. Why? Because the, the bowling ball hasn't got any momentum on its side. It hasn't got any momentum going to where it's trying to go, to where it needs to go. But if I'm at the top of a 400, pound, or 400 foot hill, and I'm like, all right, now I'm going to try to stop it at the bottom of the hill. That 15 pound bowling ball weighs a whole hell of a lot more. It feels like it weighs a whole hell of a lot more because it's got so much more momentum. You're not going to reach out your hands and try to stop a bowling ball at the bottom of a hill. It's going to break some fingers. It's going to break your hand. Something's going to happen. And so when you start to feel the momentum, ride the momentum because it's very easy to stop the momentum at the top of the hill. You want to at least start to get down a little bit, a little bit down the hill, a little bit down the hill. So it starts moving a little bit quicker. So once I start getting the next 60 seconds and I go, okay, what's the next 60 seconds? I can, I start to feel a little bit better. What's the next 60 seconds feel like? And I'm pushing myself just a little bit more, right? And then if I want to, to add on top of that, one of the best ways to do that is tip number seven is to get around other people, right? Now, when I say get around other people, I mean, get around the right people, right? You got to make sure you're getting around people who are actually going to be holding yourself to a higher standard. 
Uh, earlier in the week, on Wednesday, I work out with a group of men. There's like 15, 20 of us that work out every single Wednesday. It's just the way that we've been doing it now for the past three months, right? Uh, this Wednesday, my alarm went off. I did not want to wake up this Wednesday. Didn't feel like it. It was really freaking cold outside. We work out outside and I was like, no way. I don't want to do it. And I felt that little voice inside of my head say, Rob, just stay asleep. And I was like, no. I hate you, little voice. This is a little voice that's trying to keep me from all of my dreams. I like to call it the inner bitch. And I, when I hear the little inner bitch and I can identify it, I've got to do the exact opposite of what it says. And I was like, oh, all right, I got to get up. I go and I didn't want to work out. But I knew that if I was around 15 to 20 other guys that were working out, it would start to make me feel better. It would start to give me motivation to be around those people that are also doing something amazing with their life. So I forced myself. I was like, I'm not going to negotiate with you. I got some coffee, got out the door, immediately went there. And we worked out for an hour and 21 minutes, according to my heart rate monitor. And I burned almost 1,100 calories, over 1,000 calories in a workout. I would not, I promise you this, I would not have burned 1,000 calories. I don't know if I've ever burned 1,000 calories in a workout by myself, but I burned a thousand, over 1,000 calories in that hour and 21 minutes. I definitely wouldn't have gone for an hour and 21 minutes either. But the thing is, when you're around other people with the same mission that have momentum going on their side, there's something that happens cohesively when everybody else is working towards the same mission. So are there other people that are working towards getting better in their mind, that are working towards getting better in their business, that are working towards getting better in their relationship, that are working towards getting better in their finances, that are working towards getting better in their bodies, whatever it is that you can get yourself. And even if you don't feel like it, you can place yourself around them and being around them motivates you to be better. That's what you've got to think about. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. It's very simple. Life is not hard. Well, okay, let me, let me, re let me rephrase that. Life is not hard to understand.